Well, Jason Kelly is the shadow communications spokesperson. He's often touted as a potential future Labor leader. I spoke to him a short time ago, particularly about the budget broadly, some of the measures in his area in relation to the ABC. But I started by asking that if it's not a budget emergency, but it's at least a budget problem, does he acknowledge that? And does he acknowledge that cuts may in fact be necessary? The Labor Party agrees that there are challenges that we face. Uh, the ageing of the population, the increase in health care costs over the course of the, the next few years means that we do need to make structural changes to our budget. The, the key question, Peter, is what those changes are and how you do them. My, my main criticism of the budget is threefold. First, the Prime Minister lied. He, he should have told us the truth before the election and he should admit that he's lied now. The second criticism I'd make is that by his own words, by Joe Hockey's own words, they're hurting the economy now. We've seen confidence drop because of all of the ridiculous uh, statements about a budget emergency. And, and thirdly, that the way they're going about this is that they're targeting the wrong people. They're taking taxes off mining companies, taxes off people who've got a lot of money in superannuation, and they're unfairly putting the tax burden on the sick and the poor, but in that's why on the that, budget is so unpopular. But let me just jump in on that. In fairness, it does look like they're spreading the tax load. I mean, the deficit tax is aimed at high income earners. Big business is having to pay for the paid parental leave scheme. And then, yes, on top of that, everyone's paying the co-payments for uh, seeing a doctor and, and lower income earners are, are being hit in relation to pensions eventually uh, and new start. That sounds like a, a broad-based effort uh, to try to pay back Labor's debt. Well, Peter, the, the facts don't lie. If you're earning about $200,000 a year, then the impact of this budget for you is that you'll have to find about four or $500. But if you're a family with about $100,000, you'll have to find four or $5,000. And if you're a pensioner, the changes to indexation will mean that over time it's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars more. What Chris Bowen said at the press club today was that for people on low incomes, the, the lowest 20% in Australia, this will effectively reduce their, their income by 5%, whereas people on the top 20% bracket in Australia, it'll reduce their available income by about half a percent. So when I, I said this morning to Kieran Gilbert, it's a reverse Robin Hood budget. It's, it's giving money to people who don't need it, particularly wealthy people who are having children, and it's taking money off the people who need it the most, families on low incomes, and Australian pensioners. Do you accept uh, that the pension idea, as unpopular as it no doubt is, isn't a broken promise because the implementation of it will only be able to happen after the next election? That's what the government's arguing. Uh, it's not an unreasonable point. No, I disagree with that one too. It's booked. It's in the budget. They've put it in the forward estimate. So it determines what the budget says, what the deficit figures are, when the budget returns to surplus. The Prime Minister said there'd be no changes. They've got to take this to an election and get a mandate for the people to increase the pension age and to cut indexation before they start booking these changes. And that's what they've done in this budget. What about in uh, your policy area of communications, the cuts to the ABC? Uh, sitting here at Sky News, we well know uh, that it's possible to run a, a leaner, more efficient enterprise than the ABC. Surely you'd agree with that? Well, I, I think I've told you before, Peter, that any organisation, whether it's private or public, can be more efficient. Uh, the problem here is that Tony Abbott promised the night before the election that there'd be no cuts to the ABC. And he's clearly broken that promise. I agree with you yep. about that. However, isn't the problem here not the breaking of the promise, but the making of the promise? The breaking of it uh, is for a better end. Uh, the making of it was political stupidity ahead of the election. Yeah, well, well you, you, you said it. No one forced him to say it, but the night before the election he said no cuts to education, no cuts to health, no changes to the pension, no changes to the GST, no cuts to the ABC, no cuts to SBS. So to hold him to his word, what I've said to you before, and I'll say it again, is that if you can find efficiencies in the ABC, then reinvest that money in more services, more programs for the Australian people, rather than cutting away at the basic services that ABC provides, but also the Australian network, which I know you, you believe is a regressive and, and stupid move that's going to hurt Australia's influence in our region. We've, you've talked a lot in this interview uh, about Tony Abbott's broken promise. It's been a, a theme in the media. It's been a theme of the opposition more generally. Uh, it's fair to say that Labor well understands the political pain that he could suffer for broken promises because it happened to your side of the parliament over the carbon tax. 
Well, th this is why this is such an incredible thing for Tony Abbott to do. He, he, he traipsed around the country for three years off the back of one thing Julia Gillard said the night before an election. And throughout the last three years, he said the same thing time after time after time. No new taxes, no increases in taxes, no cuts to education, no cuts to health. And we're going to hold him to it. Because and, and I understand you're doing that. And, and he's silly to have put himself in the position where the charge of hypocrisy is a reasonable one. But by the same token, that charge goes both ways, doesn't it? Because having now held him to account for his broken promise, you're continuing to hold the line on your broken promise over the carbon tax in the Senate. You're not letting it be no, repealed. Look, uh, we would be very happy to get rid of the carbon tax, replace it with an emissions trading scheme, replace it with something w that will work. What we don't want to do is replace it with a two and a half billion dollar direct action program which no one knows how it will work and no one thinks it will work. The point I'm making is it takes a lot of chutzpah to run around the country saying that you're going to be Mother Teresa and you'll keep your promises and then win an election, go to, a, go to your first budget and basically break everything. Tony Abbott's become like one of those professional wrestlers. No one believes what he says anymore because they think it's all fake. One of the issues, just as a final question, is your side of politics is playing the negative game. I don't blame you. It's early in the term. Tony Abbott did it to you uh, right throughout your time in government. But when are we going to see a change of tack by Labor? Are we going to start building an alternative vision? Because if you're just a, a version of what you were ahead of losing the election, uh, you're really not trying to win the next. Well, we're not going to do what Tony Abbott did and just say no to everything. We'll be constructive. Where he comes up with bad ideas like trying to demolish Medicare, we'll stand and defend it and stop him from doing that. The same thing goes with the pension. Same thing goes with the attempt to create a two-tier university system. But if they come up with good ideas, we'll back them. They're rolling out the reforms I made to customs and I'm backing that. I think that's a good thing that Minister Scott Morrison is doing. And on new policy areas, well, uh, Chris Bowen announced a few today. If we're going to create the jobs of the future, a lot of them are going to be in the tech sector. And Chris Bowen today announced a number of areas where we think we can grow the Australian economy by providing the right environment for the tech sector to thrive in Australia. All right, Jason Clear, appreciate your time. Thanks for your company. Thanks, Pete.